Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar with a thought that's been spinning up around in my head for a pretty lengthy amount of time. I made this kind of a video uh, here and there. I think these videos come about when newer information really get brought up, but it's sort of my intermittent love for mobile gaming that's kicking and not just any type of mobile gaming. You all know your boy plays a lot of games on his emulator, tries to pretty much play as many of these big budget games as possible on portable devices anyways. Dude, I'm just more of a portable person nowadays rather than just sitting in front of a PC screen or a console at this point. And not to say that I can't play games on a console or PC anyways, dude. I played through, you know, Yakuza, God of War. I mean, I play Siege on a pretty regular basis on the PC anyways. So for me, it's not like it's a foreign concept, but when it comes time for, I realize a lot of these big, big games that I sort of spend weeks upon on weeks playing the last big one which was Final Fantasy X, a game that I really really enjoyed but I played it on the PS4 and I didn't mind you know playing it on the system anyways in fact I bought the PS4 HD remaster and I played it anyways now, I realized I should have probably bought it for the Vita or something at the time because I realized that, man, I am just, I do not have the amount of time dedicated to sit in front of a system anymore and put like six or seven hours into it and crank out a chunk of a JRPG anymore. Unless it's something that I really give a shit about, like Persona 5, which even then, my first playthrough for that game, you know, absorbing all the cutscenes and whatnot, took me well over a month, two months, I believe, even. I, I did not finish that game in what somebody would consider a reasonably fast amount of time. It took me a while to finish my Persona 5, but it is what it is. The game was fucking long. Same thing with God of War. It took me a while to finish that game anyways. Normally, I could have cranked that motherfucker out on a weekend, but, you know, it took took me a little bit. Took me. I, I was away from a game, and frankly, I don't have the time to dedicate something, you know, in a singular location for a large length of time. And that's sort of why I've been playing a lot of my Nintendo Switch as well anyways. I have sort of just play a game on the Nintendo Switch, start it, and I don't have to worry about loading it up anymore. I just close the power button when I'm done playing it, or I'm done feeling like playing it, put it away, come back to it, literally with almost with a sense of no time being lost whatsoever. And there's also an added benefit of being able to play a game, even if it is within your house, because I realize that I don't often take the Switch with me outside anyways. I'm not taking a $300 console outside into the fucking wild uh, for me to play a game. I don't have to play a fucking video game that bad. But for me, I solely like the feeling of just laying in bed or on a couch somewhere in my house, having a game right up close to me and being able to play it. That's sort of one thing that I've grown to appreciate as, uh, as the system has been released. And one of the things that I've always really supported mobile gaming on to an extent is getting that similar feeling, although in a slow but drip-fed way. For me, mobile gaming, and I'm referring to mobile gaming as cell phone gaming at this point, cell phone gaming has had a pretty bad rap, and deservedly so. Cell phone gaming is where I think a lot of the modern gaming cancers sort of come from, you know, your microtransactions, your loot boxes, all that good shit, the energy systems, whatever. And there are tons of mobile games that are like that on the platforms nowadays. You can go to the Android or iOS store and experience that shit till the days come. And they're never not going to not be popular. They're always still going to release. We're always still going to have those type of games. But I think one of the type of games that I think people really do overlook is nowadays you're able to actually get pretty solid gaming experiences on your cell phone anyways. And what's actually doubly more impressive and what makes it really cooler is that most of the cell phones that we get nowadays in the higher end mid tier bracket have abilities to connect Bluetooth game controllers, stream displays wirelessly and efficiently out to TVs or set top boxes. And essentially, you have what is a Nintendo Switch. For me, when I travel, one thing that I absolutely hate carrying is multiple pieces of technology. When I travel now, the most I ever would carry is a laptop because as a video editor, I do need a, something that has a steady supply of processing power. Otherwise, fuck the laptop. I would have just carried a tablet in that case. A cell phone for sure, which at this point in this day and age, a cell phone is a required commodity. I mean, in order to communicate with jobs and whatnot, you're going to need one and one portable game console at the most. If I'm going somewhere maybe extended or if I'm going to go meet the guy somewhere cool, we might bring a PlayStation 4 for some, you know, co-op gaming or some, you know, four-player split-screen brawling, that kind of stuff. Nothing major. We're not going to play a story game together when we're out traveling, but you get the point. 
at that point, I really don't want to bring much more when it comes to travel with me anyways, or work or whatever. I, I tend to keep my electronic devices pretty limited. Even if I want to play a game or something, I'll rarely ever bring like a Vita or a 3DS or something and play that alongside if I want to. And even then, I realize that I don't often do it. But one thing that I definitely can appreciate is the sole fact of having many of these gaming experiences on my cell phone available that I can play them simply by opening an app, getting my time into it, and just closing the app right there and then. Lately, I was able to play Knights of the Old Republic on an iPad through and through. I was able to play Evil Land 1 and 2 in their entirety on my cell phone. And uh, there are some other couple games out there, but you get the sort of point. I've been able to get these full gaming experiences on a cell phone device. And, you know, the whole idea of control schemes has always really hit me. And I understand people don't like touch controls. They prefer the physical side of it. But that's sort of one thing that I wanted to focus on. Lately, I've been browsing in my free time the higher end Android uh, cell phone store and specifically the Chinese marketplace for Android cell phones as well, too. But there are some notable uh, big budget brands that I want to talk about as well, too. One of the big phones that was actually showcased on the Android front was that Razer phone, a phone that I was kind of interested in getting, but because the fact that it was a 120 hertz screen, I knew at the time no game was really going to be pushing that at all. I realized it wasn't exactly the most intelligent phone to go out and get, and I wasn't so worried on it. So I ended up skipping that idea and I decided to just keep my uh, iOS ecosystem intact. But looking at the modern day really high end ecosystems now for both devices, whether you look at the iPhone X or you look at the Samsung's Note line, you're going to notice that these thousand dollar phones are pretty damn impressive as they should be for a fucking thousand dollars. But what actually makes these appealing, though, is versus a game console like the Nintendo Switch or the PS Vita or the 3DS, which do have their own set of exclusive games and whatnot and dedicated control schemes, one thing I noticed, too, is that a phone is definitely more valuable and more viable to carry around than just a gaming system anyways. You're going to need to have something that is as efficient, something that can handle as many tasks as you want in a very small package. And in that case, man, if you can only carry one device at a time, and really that's kind of how it should be, then a cell phone should probably be it, which makes owning a game console, like a portable one, kind of an iffy deal, carrying it around and whatnot, dealing with switching out carts and all that shit. You get the point. But for me, looking at the higher end marketplace, I've noticed that some of these cell phones have started to push this gear towards a gaming platform on their cell phone, uh, more so and so forth. I was looking at an Asus Rogue phone. Believe it or not, Rogue is planning on making phones. If you don't know what Asus Rogue is, it's their Republic of Gamers brand. I'm kind of, I should probably be sponsored by Asus at this point because I own a monitor, laptop, GPUs from these guys anyways. They make good quality stuff. But they're making this phone that A, serves as a phone, but it also comes with attachable parameters peripherals, sort of like a Nintendo Switch, if you will, where you can have these hard-coded sort of control schemes attached to it, and it works pretty efficiently. It's almost like I'm looking at the fucking N-Gage being reborn, like the Jesus of the N-Gage is sort of stepped down from the mobile gaming heavens above, and per I, can't, I can't even say that statement without a, with, a, with a straight face, but mobile gaming Jesus dropped from above, reborn himself as an actual playable system. I'm not saying the N-Gage is fucking terrible or anything, I mean, hey, for the time, the N-Gage was mm, great great as fuck, but seeing a cell phone device like this come out delivering the performance and stuff that it has is pretty damn impressive, but this comes off with some caveats that I wanted to sort of focus on too. I'm kind of afraid dealing with something like this because it's only one high-end device out of many, and for the marketplace that mobile gaming is kind of at now, it sort of appears to be a situation where I almost feel that it's going to be a dead-on-arrival type project. I want to see mobile gaming sort of survive, thrive, and actually make a name for itself, and with big-budget games like Valkyrie Profile Lenith, I mean, not big-budget, it's a PSP port, coming out for $20, I'm sort of seeing that we're having a situation where we're getting full-quality games and I sort of wonder to see if the community is going to end up buying it. The power of these devices has increased, storage sizes have increased, and with that, I'm sure that gaming should also increase too. But as always, I want to ask what you all think about the situation as well, ladies and gentlemen. At the end, what do you think about mobile gaming? I mean, hell, I'm going to make a video looking at the siege of mobile gaming, believe it or not. But let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like if you dislike it, this is me, Mudahar, and I am...